Welcome to the Sacred Listening Podcast, a sanctuary for those who feel overwhelmed, overscheduled, and overbusy. In this podcast, we explore the various paths of restoring balance in our body from issues such as depletion, anxiety, chronic pain, and stress. We do this by redefining what self-care means on an individual level as we dive into cutting-edge research, personal stories, expert interviews, as well as listening in to the magic and mysticism of our body's wisdom. Join me in reclaiming your health, well-being, and your sense of self. Hello and welcome back to the Sacred Listening Podcast. I'm Elena Young, IAYT certified yoga therapist and a self nurture advocate. Together, we will be listening in to our body's inner wisdom to help restore health, well being, and a sense of self. So, today I'm talking about a very important topic regarding self care and self nurture. People of color and marginalized communities who face a disproportionate amount of societal stress and burden are often the ones who need self-nurture and self-care the most. But because of this economy around self-care, it's often inaccessible, let alone having time for themselves because of the type of work and jobs they usually hold. And Usually, they don't even have time to think about how they can care for themselves and nurture themselves. So that's why today I have Elena Velez, founder and director of Community Restorative Training, or CRT for short, here with us today to speak on this very important mission she is on, to educate and bring accessibility of self-care to marginalized communities. Elena is the founder and director of Community Restorative Training, and she brings 18 years of experience as a certified medical interpreter to create bilingual stress reduction wellness program for essential workers. So welcome to the podcast today, Elena. Really honored and glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elena. It's really so beautiful to be here with you again. We have been together working, trying to provide meditation practices to the Latino community. After working together in a medical venue, I was your interpreter. And then you were providing and I was interpreting. So that was a beautiful experience you allowed me to do. Um, just trying to train the Latino community about self-care and pausing in their lifestyle providing themselves of, of some kind of attention. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. You're someone that's always been very inspiring to me in terms of what you do. Um, and just a little backstory for everyone else here too. Yeah, Elena and I met almost 10 years ago, 10 years ago, maybe, yes. at uh, yes. like a pain clinic. Functional restoration program. Yeah, rest, mm -hmm. functional restoration program. And I was teaching weekly yoga classes there for the patients. And Elena was one of the medical interpreters. And we just, um, we just kind of stayed in contact over the years. And that experience at the functional restoration program also really opened my eyes as to the ratio of Latino Hispanics who have chronic pain. It's maybe like 60, 70% of the patients that go through the program uh, with chronic pain from work injury or some sort of work accident. And that really opened my eyes to how, how needed it is in Latino and Hispanic communities to have these tools and education as well as resources to learn how to take care of themselves, especially with the kind of jobs they usually hold that's very physically intensive. And they really need to know that taking care of their bodies is essential for them and for their community. So what you do is really important for everyone there. So 
tell us a little bit more about CRT, Community Restorative Training, and what inspired CRT, what's the mission it stands for, and how are you bringing CRT to your communities? Yes, thank you. Um, the reason I created CRT after 19 years of being a healthcare interpreter it was because I was witnessing, I have still been witnessing patients kind of uh, not preventing in any way how to or how managing their health, their unbalanced lifestyle. So the mission of my program is to precisely give access to education. So my program has education has restorative movement and has the meditation and mindfulness aspect in it. So within 30 minutes, I provide education in the sense of they don't know what is in their body. They just know our culture is basically focus on the physical body and move on. Just wake up and move and that's it. Don't pay attention to your pain. Don't listen to your body or your emotions. So I'm teaching emotional intelligence, nutrition, how important it is to sleep well. So all these factors that they kind of take for granted, I am teaching them that it is important to pay attention for them, for themselves, at work, at home. So because everything is connected, the way you behave at home affects the next day at work. So you are affecting your life and your company, the idea the company where you work for understands that it is important to support your workers because despite the fact that they are loving their job, even if it's physically really hard, they need to take care of themselves. And if you as a boss don't support them and don't validate them, that is also a mistake on your end as, a, as an employer. So it's a mutual commitment. I'm trying to promote mutual commitment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, especially with, um, I don't know if it's culturally or ingrained in society that um, maybe it's capitalism. They just don't take care of their employees, but they are the backbones of this country. I know you work with employees of farms. And I, I remember you sharing with me a little bit during the pandemic, how, how crazy it was for them. They are the essential workers and they're out there in the heat and putting themselves at risk because sometimes they are in pretty tight quarters working next to each other. But they're still, you know, working at very little wage. Very true. So interesting enough, COVID at the same time that brought such a difficult time for globally, it just uh, gave me the opportunity to get involved with the agricultural community because as an interpreter, we rarely see farmers at the clinics because they don't, they are not insured. So they don't end up in clinics because of insurance. Nobody's providing for them. But then COVID, I realized when COVID happened, everybody disappeared except for them. I say, who's feeding the doctors? And it's them. So I decided to reach out to a farm here in California. And then I asked, hey, would you like to do the pilot program? Would you like to see how this works? There was a curiosity about how men will be doing this because, you know, the Latino macho don't, will, won't exercise or won't meditate. Like, what is that? And But I, I made it in a very fun way. Everybody laughed and everybody understood. Everybody noticed this is actually helpful. This I'm learning from this, even though people laugh at each other, but it was a very respectful situation. So through farmers, I learned a lot of the burden, the level of isolation, lack of language access, lack of so many things, education by, by many means. So I was able to introduce them to this idea and many of them were like, I cannot do meditation. This is something I am incapable of. 
and little by little by practicing they learn yeah you can actually stop you can actually be quiet and there's nothing wrong about that we i was able to break that stigma about working on this together like i'm gonna look less macho or somebody maybe laughing at me nobody cares we dance we so we did beautiful experience we draw we did art you have no idea my experience with them i gave them two color color paper with colors i just like i don't know a hundred colors i will never expect what i got from them the most beautiful colorful papers i have pictures in my website wow. it's, it's, it is it is beautiful how loving colorful they they were coming from men and women yeah on both sides yeah so they oh. that explains that they had a lot of love to give they they are not aware how much love they need to receive but mm -hmm. i am aware mm -hmm. so i am kind of opening eyes and ears to everybody there even themselves and employers about we need to take it the fact that somebody don't ask for help doesn't mean they don't need it right yeah and especially like you say in in latino culture they tend to just like toughen up and not yes. share about their their challenges yes. um so it's it's so beautiful you're you gave them space and capacity to express themselves in such a way yes. Right. Yeah, I am really, I'm really proud of that. We, we, as an individual and as a company, we need to be a little bit more aware of our surroundings and stop expecting for people to ask and give. And that is, and and that is something that I learned here because when I came with my idea, I, I it was, I once, once somebody told me, you, you, you don't give requests unrequested advice in America. Don't give unrequested advice. And that yeah. stuck on me because I, I, I wish somebody has come to me with unrequested advice and say, hey, Elena, come down one second, stop and breathe. Nobody ever mm -hmm. told me that and I was very stressed out taking care of my kids mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. So I disagree with that mentality, honestly. Right. Yeah. There's um, in, in the United States, there's this uh, sense of individuality. I can do it myself and I have to do it myself. I'll push through and can't ask for help because that's weakness, that kind of mentality. But it, it actually does a lot more harm keeping everything to ourselves than then good. Not only are you putting that burden on yourself, you're potentially hurting people around you by not asking for help because one person cannot alone carry all of that burden on themselves, especially people of color, minorities, marginalized communities. They can't put all that burden on themselves. So the fact that you're educating them that it's okay to ask for help. And I love what you said. You taught them that you can just stop and take a little break for yourself. Um, I'm curious what kind of tools you taught them and whether they're able to just take one minute, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, just to take a breath or just do a stretch or something. I wonder what kind of tools and resources you have equipped them with. What I created is a program, a 12 week program I teach them about like when you have a situation, a challenge, how important it is to instead of reacting, it's just to respond. And you can only respond by just stopping thinking. Like, okay, hold on, what should I be doing here instead of doing? And then I teach them about the importance of breathing and different techniques to breathe, like techniques that teach them, like when we cry, naturally we we do that when we cry and that releases so much pain emotional pain so i give them examples that i'm sure i am convinced everybody leaves so 
by showing that, for example, they say, okay, yeah, no, when I cry, I do that. Mm -hmm. It's like a body's natural response to handle the the pain, the stress, the emotions of dispelling and processing all of that hardship. It's the importance of sleeping well. Because this community do not sleep well. They are super stressed out, tired. They don't relax their body. They just move their body like a machine with no ignition. About, I explained about nutrition. How important is nurturing your body the right way, not putting stuff in there just to let go of the hunger. You actually, I am even myself practicing, but I don't advise that to them, uh, intermittent fasting and how you can really take care on your own, your own body, take care of your, your extra energy that is already set in there because the food you have eaten a week ago or something. Mm -hmm. So you, I teach them about nutrition, what to, I, I think it's all about access. What are you putting in front of you? What do you have access to? in terms of food or what kind of liquids or things you're taking that are not helping your body. You're getting more tired if you're eating too late, if you are having too much meat or beef or things like not enough vegetables that gets you constipated. It's just everything has consequences and you don't sleep well. So things like that, nutrition also, I call restorative movements, which is, not yoga, because they don't know about yoga. I didn't know about yoga. Being an adult, being an English speaker, living here, I didn't ever practice not for any different reason that I always thought that for people that had trained their entire life. And I never. Right. But, but I was very, I've been very flexible my entire life because I moved voluntarily from very young age stretch myself so I found qigong and I adapted qigong to my personal stretching and I am just showing them qigong how important is to just make the basic the basic movements slow motion and it's meditative at the same time you know you are not dancing crazy like zumba it's not because they love music. We lo yeah. I love music. Yeah, yeah. But it's another way to demonstrate. You don't need to go so um, agitated. You just can do it slow, and it's equally important to your body. That kind of uh, pa passive movement in your life. I teach them about emotional intelligence. How important it is to be aware of how your feeling what caused you to feel like that who caused it what happened notice like and where in your body you're feeling that so be aware listen and if if you feel pain don't don't judge pain pain is actually an announcement from your body to you telling you you're doing something wrong that's yeah. all i'm telling yeah. you just listen to me yeah and it's just that. So things like that is what I teach. And I teach about resilience. I teach about, we are a very resilient community, actually. We come back from, from devastating situations really easily. But we need to be aware of our emotions. We need to be aware of how traumatic that was. And listen to ourselves. Don't ignore that. And uh, also the toxicity of too much fun and toxic relationships and how to really release that. I think we need to release toxicity in every way. So friendships that are actually judgmental and not understanding you, judging and only not providing any good to you, just be, be strong and just get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Or talk and try your best, but not letting them pushing you down. Right. Setting healthy boundaries. Bravo.
exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's just teaching these things that uh, they are might they might be thinking of, but they don't they don't know. They're not sure if they are. It's in their mind, right? No, there's no validation validation on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So giving them a voice to something they're feeling but not expressing, and Bra. giving them sure. tools on how to express that in a in a useful way. Yeah. So I'm curious because your home country, Colombia, and in the United States, do you see similarities, or is it when when Latinos and Hispanic communities are put in the states that this becomes more of a a pressure on them to toughen up even more. Do you see the similarity in, in back in Colombia too, that, um, that people are uh, resistant to taking care of themselves? The thing is, Colombia, it has a variety of social levels. There is, there is very rich people there very rich people, but there's a lot of very extremely poor. There's a lot of poverty around there. So I think throughout all Hispanic community, regardless on the country, interesting enough, the poorest people is super happy. You see the most Mm. beautiful smiles, beautiful smiles in these people despite the the situation, the circumstances. And you see very rich people that is very unhappy too. And there's a lot of privilege on the rich people, which is it's everywhere. So I'm seeing I'm seeing Colombia the same way I'm seeing here. Yeah. I actually think we're happy behaving and copying Americans in many ways in Colombia. They copy a lot. This is this is kind of an honor to behave to behave like Americans. Yeah, oddly enough, definitely the people and countries that are that have been least influenced by the West, by America, by United States, are some of the happiest and most resilient people. I see, weirdly enough, and you think that the richer you are, the more resilient, happy you are, but that's often not the case. I feel like to a certain level when, uh, obviously, you know, if you're in poverty, then that's that's another story. That's, that's a whole nother level of challenge. But sometimes the less you have, the happier you are, you are more connected with yourself. You're more connected with your community. And that goes so far in someone's, mental and emotional well-being whereas sometimes the more you have the you're you're kind of disconnected with your family yeah. with your community you're very isolated yeah you, you, you it was funny when covid happened you saw these people in these mansions complaining about being enclosed in their mansions <laughs> yeah <laughs> because they were facing who they married and their real situation as a family. Well, poor people was super cool together. They handled, they loved each other. They really were able to manage. Of course, COVID evoked different situations, but uh, but you could see that is money is not the key. Money is not what you need. You need really to care about people. And that's exactly what I I think it is important to realize. We need each other. We are social beings that we need each other and we don't need each other to explode each other. We need to understand what you can provide to me and what I can give to you so you can be who you want to be. So it's, it again goes back to the mutual commitment. You pay, I do but give me something more as as an employer, you know, give me, let me understand that you care about me. It's not, it's not about the check you give me. It's about taking care of me too, because I love your company. I care about your company. Like it's mine. That's how we Latinos behave. I do my job. Like it's mine. 
but employers don't do the same way, don't give back the same way. Yeah. So how, what kind of changes do you, I mean, these are obviously very big changes that may or may not happen, but what kind of changes need to happen in order for this level of community care to happen? Obviously, it sounds like the employer being involved in their employees' life and their well-being, but what else is it? I mean, obviously, you're also trying to bring CRT to as many companies as possible to help them understand and also educate the importance of employee well-being and how that will benefit the company in the long run. Yeah. And what other ideas do you have in terms of making changes in the workplace? So I, I think what is, uh, in a second I go to there, but I think it's important to understand why I am the right person to be there. Why me? And me, because I am, I have been in the other side at doctor's appointments when, when they got injured already. I know the process. And it's a very preventable thing. They need to stop thinking, employees need to stop thinking that the doctor is God and is going to give you the solution mm -hmm. because it's not God. He can, he, she cannot do everything because it gets, it, it doesn't get approved. So the process is extremely slow. And that time, that time, the only person who pays for that time is you, your body, your injured, your, you create scar tissue that immobilizes you. So what I care about is for people to understand how is this, and this is good for everybody, understanding you are preventing an injury by eating well, by sleeping well, by all these things that I explained. But why me? I have seen how it works. So let me give you that and requested advice, and then you will see. You see? And you will see how it works. And then we can, other than educating, again, the restorative movement, I do some Qigong, but not in a Qigong that I teach the animal movement. I just give the Latino kind of energy with music, even with music, and moving slow, just moving slow. And then I do a meditation on mindfulness or teach them how to be, how to meditate without feeling awkward. You can meditate while you're walking, while you are just looking for a um, butterfly. You can appreciate the present moment in so many ways. I, I myself, I laugh at myself because I see when I drive and I see or I walk, I see crows running on the street. That to me is extremely funny because they are supposed to fly. What are you doing? Why are you running instead of flying? So just giving yourself some, some little love about something distracting you for, from so many challenges. So... The changes that I see is everybody accepting who they need and give something additional to their check, to that payment, to realize that validation is important to all of us. You tell me, yeah, you need me, you're paying me, but let me feel that I am important too, you know? We all need that in every relationship, in every sense. So let me understand that this commitment, this mutual commitment is beneficial to both of us. That's what I would like to see. Yeah, and it sounds like also maybe a very important step is having them see their own value, their own worth too, so that they can ask for what they need. Otherwise, it's for them, it, they just feel like, oh, with, I'm not important, so I don't need to ask for some time for myself. I don't need to take a break. I don't need to take care of myself if they don't see that they're valuable and they are worth taking care of. Yeah, and that starting from the farmers, when I first 
see them and introduce myself, I say, you have the biggest diploma ever. There's no world that can feed the diploma or the certification. Don't compare to a lawyer. Don't compare to a doctor. Don't compare yourself to anybody because you, without you, nobody will exist. That simple. There's no profession better than yours, and I am grateful to you for that. I am the voice of everybody that is not saying you thank you. I am telling you that. Without you, we cannot survive. So what you do, we, are, we appreciate, and uh, if I hope somebody else will tell you, but you need to feel important. You are very important to us. So telling them. Thank you for that. That's so beautiful. And I feel like that's a good place to wrap up our conversation today. Um, and where can people learn more about CRT? Can you give us a website or how to get in contact with you? Sure. Yeah. My website is crt-eco.com. O-R-G. CRT-ECO.org and my email address is Elena at Elena Velez dot C-O. Okay, I'll put that also in the show notes so people can also find that. And then on your website, there's a beautiful video of you uh, working with the farmers and the employees and explaining what you do. And there are beautiful captures of the type of restorative movements and conversation you're having with these employees on the farm and worth go checking out and worth going seeing to see and understand more about what you do. Thank yeah. you. Beautiful. Thank you. It's always being a pleasure working with you. Lovely to connect how we are Elaine and Elena. We keep joking about that. Elaine and Elena working <laughs> We created these videos together for a year. One year providing these videos together. And it was such an honor. I'm so grateful to you for that. No, you're you're such an inspiration. And I'm so honored to be able to be part of your quest and your uh, mission to bring CRT more to the workplace for the Latino community. I really very much appreciate it. Thank you. And I hope we can find ourselves together somewhere around again. Yeah. Thank you so much. And for all the healing you bring to everyone and um, we'll talk soon. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you so much. Wow. What a powerful and inspiring conversation with Elena. This goes to show how needed self-care is for everyone, especially the marginalized communities here. And that self-care is for everyone beyond just what we see on social media of mostly white and able-bodied folks. So the whole purpose behind this podcast is to show how self-care and in my realm, I like to re-term it as self-nurture, how self-nurture can be something that's self-empowering, that we can reclaim, redefine for what it is ourselves. Not the commercialized and luxurious and glamorous type of self-care we see nowadays that's on the mainstream, but simple act taking back our time, taking back and reconnecting with our bodies as a revolution. So please consult with Elena, check out CRT for further information if you would like to bring self-care to your workplace, to your communities. A small act like this, a single individual act can have a large ripple effect. So until next time, dear listeners, I encourage you to continue to listen in, listen in to what your body needs for self-nurture. Thank you so much for listening and joining me in this revolution to redefine self-care today. 
if you enjoyed the show, please leave a review, rate, and subscribe. To connect with me, you can find me on elaineyoga.com, on Instagram at elaine underscore yoga therapy, or join my email newsletter at elaineyoga.com forward slash email. 